One of the things that drives people crazy about getting things fixed in the IT world is trying to develop a process to get that job done. If you look at, for example, the automotive industry, if you need to change the brakes in your Chevy, there is very, very specific procedures that you can get from Chevrolet that tell you how to fix the brakes in your Chevy. And since the 1980s, the IT world has been trying to copy that. And it has been, in my opinion, incredibly unsuccessful at that process. Now, be that as it may, the CompTIA A Plus has a very specific set of objectives known as troubleshooting theory. And this is where CompTIA is trying to tell you what discrete steps you must do to fix stuff. Now, whether me, your author, decides that he agrees with all this or not is really not that important simply because CompTIA A Plus obsesses on these individual steps and you have got to memorize them all. So we got a choice. I could sit here and just list them out to you or better yet, why don't I show you? The best way to really understand the CompTIA's troubleshooting theory is to put it to work. So I'm drafting my buddy Janelle here who is going to go through a scenario and we're going to talk about the uh, A-plus troubleshooting theory and kind of go, just go through it so everybody gets an idea of the steps and, and how it impacts stuff. So uh, first of all, thank you for letting me once again draft you into a video. No problem. All right. Well, I just, you know, it's always so much fun when you're trying to get work done and I put a mic on you and you're trying to, you know, get work done. Thanks, pal. No problem. All right. So. Um, we're going to just, let's just go ahead and march through the steps. Now, I can't stress enough, you need to memorize every single one of these steps because Compti is going to hit you on it. So let's just go through the process. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, so number one is identify the problem. So give me a problem. I can't print. You can't print. Okay, so now the problem I have here is Janelle is extremely technical and you could probably easily fix this yourself, I know. So you got to play more user than tech for me, okay? No problem. All right, so I'm going to ask you some types of questions. So the important thing is that as a tech, I need to identify exactly what the problem is. Now, the user is going to tell me that she can't print. Uh, it could be a network problem. Uh, there's all kinds of issues where it's not necessarily, because when you say I can't print, you think printer, right? Right. Okay, but as a tech, I need to identify where the problem is. So that's going to bring us into really the second one, which is, establish a theory of probable cause. So what I'm going to start doing here is I'm going to be asking Janelle questions to help me zero in on some of the problems, okay? So you got to just make this up as we go, all right? We can do that. All right, so where can't you print? What application? Oh, I'm using Word. Okay, and uh, so I see you have a printer right here. I can print to that one, that my local printer. I can't print to our network printer where I need to send it. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, are, are you on the internet? Yeah, I'm on the internet. So you're on the internet, and uh, can can you get to the server and get uh, shared folders from the server? Yeah, I can access all of our data. All right, so you see what I'm trying to do here, folks, is that I'm trying to cut out potential areas of problem. Her system seems to be running fine. She can print to a local printer, no problem. In Word, you can print a printer in Word on that yeah. box? Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm stripping away potential problems. So it really sounds like we're zeroing in on a particular network printer. Now, I could do some other stuff at this point to tighten it up even more. So I could, for example, uh, go over to my system and try to print. So let's have some fun. Let's say I can't print either, okay? All right. So where are you gonna start pointing in terms of probable cause at this point? I would go to a network a printer driver. Printer driver, okay, I hadn't thought about that. I was gonna look at the printer, but the printer driver itself, in fact, uh, that could be a potential issue. So I'm gonna pretend like you've got an idea in your head, so we're gonna roll with that and let's see what happens. All right, so uh, so you think printer driver. Okay, I'll I've go with that. I've printed to it before, but now I can't print to it. All right, now uh, I will tell you, just out of coincidence, that uh, one of the techs here in the office, because it, it's an older uh, HP printer, we upgraded the firmware to uh, get to the latest version of PCL, and we didn't tell anybody. <laughs> and uh-oh, it sounds like nobody's printing. So we now are going to have to take a look at that and say, hmm, we may have put in a firmware update on the printer that's trashed all the printer drivers, okay? So what we're gonna to have to do now is test the theory to determine probable cause. So the best way to probably handle that, I mean, if you had a bad printer driver, what would you do? 
I get on the internet, get, get a new one. Okay, and that's really, uh, we go straight to the fourth step with that. And that's establishing a plan of action and actually implementing the solution. Now, you gotta be careful with this, Jadel, because uh, here in the office, I mean, if we've got one printer that everybody's using, it's really important for us to, as techs, we need to get everybody's printer driver up and cooking, okay? Right. But it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to try this out a little bit. So uh, what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll implement a solution, uh, but here in the office, just because we're a small office, we could go ahead and, do you mind me using you as a test dummy? Oh, that's fine. I make no implications by that. <laughs> uh, so, but we could throw, uh, update the print driver for the latest PCL drivers uh, for your system and ta-da, she's working. Okay, so uh, what we've done here is we've implemented solution, life is good. And that brings us to the fifth step, which is verifying full system functionality and if necessary, applying preventative measures. So where did we screw up? Where did us IT guys screw up? Well, you didn't tell anybody to update the drivers. Right, or more importantly, what we probably should have done is in, in a big enterprise, they would probably have a test system and we could have gone through there, tested that, uh, you know, did it some change management, uh, propagated drivers out to everybody, but we're a small office, so, you know, we kind of messed up there a little bit. So, what, what should we do in the future to, uh, as a preventative measure so we don't knock everybody down? Well, we either need to communicate that something's changed, people need to do it, or you actually need to go and change their drivers. But I'm a tech. I don't communicate. We just do things. That's the problem with that. <laughs> I know, I know. It's true. It's absolutely true. But uh, even in a small office, that would be the right solution. So as a preventive measure would be just a communique or saying something like that and saying this is happening. And uh, even, you know, great uh, super users like you could just download your own driver. But you know, that's the important thing. All right. So, uh, and the last thing, even though CompTIA doesn't say this, I'm going to say this. When they say verify full system functionality, just because I've got your printer working, that doesn't mean you've actually printed in Word. That's true. Okay? I so for me, the last thing you and I are going to do together is I'm going to say, print it. Do whatever you're doing, and I want a big smile on your face, and everything's working good. So you go ahead and print, all right? All right? So as far as I'm concerned, we're pretty much done with the user at this point. The last step in the troubleshooting theory is documentation. You need to document what you've done, what changes you've made, versions of software, firmware, hardware, whatever you've done that have been updated, mainly because it's not so much to help you, it's to help the next person who comes in line after you. So good documentation is incredibly important. Now here in a small office like this, it's not that big of a deal. I can usually just write down a little documentation for myself and we'll be in good shape. In a large enterprise, you invariably have very important workflows and very specific forms that need to be filled out and change documentation. So, we've got a number of steps on the CompTIA troubleshooting theory. Make sure you know every single one of these.